Welcome to the Draft Brewery. This is Dr. Chris Baker, DC. Fresh off uh, winning SPDC 26.05 um, with White Black Pilgrim. The Pilgrim is probably the most busted card in the format right now, right before it rotates before cons comes out. Um, it's super versatile. I got crushed by it a few weeks ago, the last time I played. And just being able to have eight copies of Ethereal Armor is pretty good, but also there's plenty of utility auras that are extremely powerful in various situations as well, which makes him an insanely good tutor. Anything time you can tutor in Standard Popper, I think it's insane. Um, so I had an interesting tournament here. Um, we had, let's see, we had 10 players. I <laughs> actually played two Swiss rounds uh, against uh, Bye Bye and Godzo, and then had to play them again in the semis and the finals. Kind of weird pairings. Um, interesting to see the metagame, some red decks, some red fast decks, some black-white control decks that were all, um, I guess, two white-black aura decks, which are very similar, and one mid-range extort deck. Um, the deck that I had played before was black, splash, white, kind of like a mono black deck splashing for some extort creatures, but this deck was all about just extorting and having tons of low cost spells and just burning people out with extort pretty much and keeping your life total high against aggro decks. Um, interesting to note here Demir Mill 03, both decks there, so basically they probably have a hard time against some of these maybe mono red decks or mono white decks that basically you know just can throw down a lot of creatures very 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 quickly and they can't deal with it all um, bug gatekeeper deck was pretty cool by godzo um, remedio had some four color control deck that was really interesting and the token deck was pretty cool too but uh, so I want to go through some of my matches and do a quick deck tech and actually some things on what I would change there's some pretty obvious cards I was just experimenting with. Uh, let's get this preview up here too. Okay, so here's the main deck that I played. 19 land, 4 Evolving Wilds, let's us play 1 Swamp since nothing costs double black and gives us effectively 9 sources but we will never really draw, you know, more than 1 land in our entire deck that can't produce white which is really good, um, even though if you look around we only have single white in our casting cost as well. There's often turns where you want to play two or three things in one turn and they all require white mana, so you don't want extra swamps at all. So the mana base is really good in that respect. Basically we are an ethereal armor Heliod's Pilgrim deck. It finds it like 90% of the time because it's such a powerful card, but I did search for other things, um, other tutorable cards. Mortal Obstinacy, this card's mainly for the mirror. Hopefully you can tutor it and then play it in the same turn. <sighs> Potentially tricking Heroic from the Sky Guard. We're just putting it on an evasive creature and then connecting and then killing their armor or killing their um, pacifism on one of your own guys or something. It's just a way to actually get some removal of uh, an enchantment or like a stab wound on your own guy. So it's not that good, but it's plus one plus one. It's tutorable. Solid. Uh, pacifism, two of. Um, it's bad against the control decks, so you don't want to overload on this. And it's not super proactive, so two is just a good number. Uh, it grows your ethereal armor, but so many of the card decks running like invasive species or even God's Willing, uh, it's just not that good against. Um, it can be good if they have like double ethereal armor on their guy and you put pacifism on it and they have to God's Willing pro white, it's fine because it at least takes care of some of their auras or maybe some of their bestow guys, but it's situational enough that it, to me it's more l likely to be used as like target creature can't block this turn attack 
and usually that's enough to just win the game because as you'll see this deck can be insanely fast at killing people other tutorable things stab wound is a one of also i think just very poorly positioned in the format right now doesn't kill very much creatures are either growing very tall with all these ethereal armors so stab wound just gets ignored um or they're the format goes wide with token decks triplicate raise the alarm all that goodness or <laughs> they have peel from reality invasive species and gatekeepers and um just plenty of ways to nullify the effect and keening apparition so stab wound again is not a card i'm looking to leave in play for more than a turn um but if you get someone with like no cards in hand and you attack them with a bunch of flyers and you get them down to low life, then you can just sometimes stab on their gatekeeper and just get a couple points of burn to the face, pretty much. Um, the core of the deck is all the bestow creatures, next one shieldmate, hopeful Eidolon, very, very good at pumping the armor and coming down on turn one. You'll see very, very important against the mono red decks as you get presence on board early. Lifelink, again, very relevant at getting us ahead of these races. We just don't want to get behind um, against some of these fast decks. Uh, which means Sun Grace Pegasus card I haven't really played with before too much, but just insanely good to put Ethereal Armor on. Um, built in lifelink means even just one armor just stops a lot of attacks. Sometimes you'll have a font or a random pacifism in play and it's a 3-4 and now it can't even be hit by lightning strike so it's pretty sick um, I think the white deck's the best deck in the format so I will play 4 Keening Apparition main it has utility against Stab Wound in the other control decks it has utility against Death's Approach some people were putting Death's Approach on my guys without them being dead yet um, it's just pretty solid just to have a 2 drop to really play the beatdown role in this format too um Skyguard I like a lot because it's cheaper than Wingsteed Rider. We do not want Wingsteed Rider. It is too high on a, on the curve, just being at one more mana, because we want to go like Skyguard into Shieldmate, and that's just big enough. Um, him with Ethereal Armor is pretty solid. And just Evasion is where it's at. Evasion is how a lot of these games are won, which is highlighting some of the changes that I would make. Um... Orm Answers, one of the grindiest cards in the deck, gives us the game against control decks. A lot of them will try to mill us proactively with like Psychic Strike Pilford plans, which just makes our Orm Answer better. Um, it commonly targets Font of Return. Once you do that, if they don't have Crypt Incursion, you basically just three for one of them out of the game. There's very little they can do. Um, also, just getting back Ethereal Armor after they deal with the creature that you know gets put on it. Is pretty awesome. Pogrom, best card in the deck, best card in the format. Now, Blood Baron and Alter's Reap, these are the experimental cards that I was trying to figure. Well, I couldn't figure out what the heck I wanted to play. I knew I wanted to look at some black cards here because I'm already playing nine sources for a free swamp. Um. And I like the effect of being able to sacrifice one of my creatures against other white decks like this that might have lifelinkers, so I can prevent lifelink, which can really help me win a race. Um, putting ethereal armor on this guy is also pretty sweet, because he can Giro insanely out of proportion, um, but just on a stalled board. Uh, gives some value to, you know, taking the stab wounds and things off my creatures. I, I needed more outs to that. You could play God's Willing, um, which is a fine option, and I probably could have considered that, but I liked just having more creatures with the fonts in the deck. Because um, the way I play this deck, I don't tend to go all in on one creature. I kind of diversify my wealth if I can to make opponents removal less good um, so just more creatures is better than not because I have more things to get back with font uh, 
and there's not really that much card advantage in the deck, so I thought one of Walter's Reap was all right, but it never came up. I never really drew any of these cards, and if, you know, I did play a Blood Baron, it just got killed by a Gatekeeper right away, so it was just not that much of a factor. Um, so I think there's some more high-impact cards that I would like to put in. Uh, the, the mana was pretty good. You want to hit three. Um, sometimes four mana is good to hit two. Um, to play Pilgrim and Armor in the same turn. But you really don't want to hit 5 mana if you can avoid it. You just would rather be drawing all spells once you're at 4. So one of my thoughts was to do some trimming. And I'm going to do this right now because if I had to play this deck next week, this is probably what I would play. Cut the Blood Blarens, cut the Altars Reap. Cut a land and add four of Daring Skyjack. So makes our curve lower, makes us more aggressive, just a normal beatdown roll. And the potential to have flying is really good. Basically, now I have 12 two drops that all have flying and a couple of one drops that can, you know, just get either played early if you need them or bestowed it's just very flexible all around so we have like this low curve if we want it if we don't need it we can save it and bestow i just i don't know it can really make these uh other decks just get blanked they have a lot of basilica creatures are too small when you're just bestowing onto these huge flyers that we have if they're attacking on the ground, we can race because we have tons of lifelink. Um, one omission is like Syndic of Ties. We just don't have enough extra mana to be extorting every turn. Um, or we kind of want to be spending our mana. Like doing things on, for three or four mana are very, very powerful. Um, so we don't really want to play all these cheap spells and then just try to extort them out. Um, I could see God's Willing. But against a lot of decks, it's just we don't need it. It's not a proactive card; it's a reactive card. Uh, you can like you know play it in your upkeep and control your draw step if they only have like a bunch of you know green blockers out. Give it pro green, and then your guy is basically unblockable for the turn. But most decks will usually have two colors of creatures or a removal spell that you want to re be reactive. So that's the main deck that I would run now. Uh, looking at the sideboard, God's Willing is insanely good, so it merits the full four of basically because uh, any deck running, yeah, like Grizzly Spectacle or Feast of Dreams or anything targeting our guys, we want that card. It's insane. Dress is fine just to hopefully snag like a really timely Crypt Incursion. It's all you're really looking to do, or like a counter spell or something, just so you can land the font, and then once the font gets landed, then use it if they don't have the incursion. Revoke, pretty good at just again breaking up some of the other Auromancer deck combos. Only really want one because it's sorcery, even though Exile is really insane. Uh, Feast of Dreams, I found, or at least just thought this card would be absolutely insane against me. Um, so I figured if anybody was running a similar deck, this would be good against them. Shrivel, just very, 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 very good against a Crone Crusader and the White Token deck. Um, I was running two for a while, but those decks, it's weird. Like, this card is just the most important card, and you just want to see it all the time. It, I'm close to running four, but uh, I think three is fine. Crypt Incursion is a one of, you want it, again, another way to interact with a bunch of people either trying to self-mill or just the Oromancer decks, the mirror, just interact with their graveyard in case the game goes long. Um, and a couple extra stab wounds. These are probably not the best. Probably can take these out. Just They're just not really, really well positioned in the format right now. Um, it's... I thought of it, it's a repeatable removal spell if they have X2s, but there's no really good X2s in the format because you'd want to kill their guy with this and then get it back with the Ormancer. Um, 
So I can see saying stab wound is bad. If the metagame, if you look at the metagame for MPDC, after I won with this, you check the metagame, it's like, oh, very heavy black white and mono white. Another white deck, there's white everywhere. One control deck, two two more Dumir Mill decks. Pilgrim, so a couple control decks made it, and then these mono white and white black decks. So what does that tell me? I need to be good in the mirror, and I need to be good against Mill. So, Stabum does really neither. It's not good in the mirror, not good against Mill. Um, I think I'm totally fine either with adding uh, things like Devour Flesh are actually really sick to gain life if I target myself. Um, or to kill one of their big guys. Celestial Flare is good, but it's a card that you could kind of easily play around. But I like it. I like how it gets rid of God. Uh, gets you know around God's willing. So I do like that a lot. Uh, Demir, yeah, I'm pretty sure Demir, we're crushing them already. We have four God's willing and a duress. Uh, and then we have Stab Wound, Two Pacifism, Mortal Obstinacy coming out. Uh, hmm. oh, we're just so good against Demir, it's ridiculous. So yeah, the best cards in the mirror. I guess Pacifism is pretty solid too, it just shuts down their things. Uh, Revoke is also solid, but if they're just like a plain white aggro deck, they're pretty good too. So, huh. I think one flare is fine. Because I like having like one of's, and so people, if they see one, they don't know if they have to play around another. And if they, you know, can diversify our threats here, it can make it tougher for them. Maybe the pacifism is just better than the stab wound. It's pretty good against. They're just trying to slow their guys down if they try to go in. If they bestow once on it, um, you get to at least get rid of, if they God's willing, they at least get rid of their bestow. Or their ethereal armor, really. Uh, the bestow creatures aren't really threatening when they're in play, but they still make the armors big. So maybe Feast. Well, I guess against the you know deck that has bunch of extorters you, you want to be able to kill their guys but really you just want to make your guys big and protect them and then just the lifelink will crush them so I don't think we need a fourth feast don't need a second revoke I guess the second flare is just totally fine just removal it's either that or pacifism but pacifism is tutorable um, and we already have two flare is just a more unique effect so all right, so those are my version 2.0 edits for Whiteback Pilgrim. Definitely confident this, and this is what I would want to play for future events. So yeah, um, if you've got any questions about the deck or anything, hopefully they get answered as we play the next few rounds. I'll just go through the matches that I played, and hopefully that will be good enough educational experience. All right. Thank you for watching this.